Good afternoon, my dear students, and here we are. We are starting pulmonology course of lectures in internal medicine. And now to our first topic will be pneumonia. The respiratory system functionally can be separated into zones. Conducting zones includes nose to bronchioles, uh, which form a part of uh, for conduction of the inhaled cases and respiratory zone from alveolar duct to alveoli where the gas exchange takes place. Anatomically, respiratory tract is divided into upper one and the lower respiratory tract we will talk in this lecture. Lower respiratory tract consists from trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, alveolar duct and alveoli. Movement of inspired gas into and exhaled gas out of lung is called ventilation. Lungs are like inflatable balloon which distend actively by positive pressure inside and over negative pressure created in the pleural space. In normal respiration, negative pleural pressure is sufficient to distend the lungs during inspiratory phase. The alveolar alveoli at the apex are exposed to greater distending pressure compared to those at the base of the lungs. The lungs are pyramid-shaped paired organs that are connected by the trachea uh, with the right and left bronchi. Uh, on the inferior space, the lungs are bordered by the diaphragm, which is the flat dome-shaped muscle located at the base of the lung and the thoracic cavity. The lungs are enclosed by pleura, which are attached to the mediastinum. Uh, the right lung is shorter and wider than the left lung, and the left lung occupies a smaller volume than the right one. The cardiac notch is an indentation of the surface of the left lung, and it allows space for the heart. The apex of the lung is uh, the superior region, where the base is the opposite region near the diaphragm. The costal surface of the lung borders the ribs. The medicinal surface faces the midline. Each lung is composed of the smaller units called lobes. Uh, fissures separate those lobes one from another. The right lung consists of the three lobes, superior, inferior, and middle one. The left consists from two lobes, superior and inferior. The bronchopulmonary segment is a division of the lobe, and each lobe houses multiple bronchopulmonary segments. Pulmonary circulation differs from systemic circulation. The pulmonary vessels are thin walled and have less musculature to assist fast diffusion of gases. They are subjected to less pressure compared to systemic circulation. Because of the less pressure and structural differences of the pulmonary vasculature to assist diffusion, they are subjected to pull inside the thorax and the gravity. On the basis of the influence of the gravity, perfusion of the lung is divided into three zones. The distribution of the blood flow in these zones depends on the three factors, the alveolar pressure, the pulmonary arterial pressure, and the pulmonary venous pressure. Pneumonia is an infection of the pulmonary parenchyma, and consolidation of pneumonia must be differentiated from pulmonary function. Atelectasis is bronchial obstruction, and congestive heart failure includes pulmonary edema, but it may coexist with any of these conditions and with two or more of these conditions together. Pneumonia results from the proliferation of microbial pathogens at the alveolar level and the host response to those pathogens. Microorganisms gain access to the lower respiratory tract in several ways. The most common is by aspiration from oropharynx. Small volume aspiration occurs frequently during the sleep, especially in elderly patients with neurological disorders, alcoholics, and patients with decreased level of consciousness. Many pathogens are inhaled as contaminated droplets. Rarely, pneumonia occurs via hematogenous spread from tricuspid endocarditis in patients, for example, with meningitis or in patients with, for example, sepsis, or by uh, contagious extension from an infected pleural or medicinal space. Mechanical factors are critically important in the host defense. The hairs and turbinates of the nares capture larger inhaled particles before they reach the lower respiratory tract. 
The branching architecture of the trunk and bronchial tree traps microbes on the airway lining, where mucocellular clearance and the local antibacterial factors either clear or kill the potential pathogen. The GEX reflex and the cough mechanism offer critical protection from aspiration. In addition, the normal flora inherit the mucosal cells of the oropharynx, uh, whose components are remarkably constant, uh, prevents pathogenic bacteria from binding and thereby uh, decrease the risk of pneumonia caused by these virulent bacteria. When these barriers are overcome or when microorganisms are small enough to be inhaled at, to the alveolar level directly, resident alveolar macrophages are extremely efficient at clearing and the killing pathogens. Macrophages uh, are seized by protein that are produced by alveolar epithelial cells called surfactant proteins A and D, and that have in clinic opsonin properties for antibacterial or antiviral activity. Once engulfed by the macrophages, the pathogen, even if they are not killed, are eliminated via either the mucosolar elevator or the lymphatics and no longer represent an infectious challenge. Only when the capacity of the alveolar macrophages to undigest or kill the microorganism virus uh, is exceeded, uh, does clinical pneumonia become manifest. In that situation, the alveolar macrophages initiate an inflammatory response to boost a lower respiratory tract defense. The host inflammatory response, rather than proliferation of the microorganism, triggers the clinical uh, syndrome of pneumonia. Uh, different uh, pro-inflammatory cytokine release as interleukin-1, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin-8, uh, and also granular colony stimulating factors stimulate the release of neutrophils and their attraction to the lung, producing both peripheral leukocytosis and increased purulent secretion. Inflammatory mediators released by macrophages and the newly recruited neutroph neutrophils create an alveolar capillary leak equivalent to that seen in the acute respiratory distress syndrome. Also, the pneumonia, this leak is localized, at least initially. Uh, even the retrocytes can cross the alveolar uh, capillary membrane with consequent uh, hemoptysis appearance. The capillary leak results in a radiographic infiltrate and rails crackles detectable on auscultation, and hypoxemia results from alveolar filling. Moreover, some bacterial pathogens appear to interfere with the hypoxemic vasoconstriction that would normally cure with the fluid-filled alveoli, and this interference can result in severe hypoxemia. Increased respiratory drive in the systemic inflammatory response syndrome leads to respiratory alkalosis, decreased compliance due to capillary leak, hypoxemia, increased respiratory drive, increased secretion, and occasional infection related bronchospasm. All this leads to dyspnea. In severe enough, uh, the changes in the lung mechanism, secondary to reduction in lung volume and compliance, and the intrapulmonary shunting of the blood make cause respiratory failure and the patient's death. Classical pneumonia, pneumonia sorry, evolves through a series of pathological changes. So all starts from edema on the tissue, presence of the proteinaceous exudate and often of bacteria and alveoli, clinical and not distinguishable. Uh, the second stage is red hepatization. Uh, it's a presence of erythrocytes in the cellular intralveolar exudate, uh, in addition to with uh, neutrophil influx. Bacteria are occasionally seen. Uh, and in this phase, you can auscultate crepitatio index or the crepitation of the start. In the third phase, or called also great hepatization, non urethrocytes are extravasating, and those already present have been lysed and degraded. The neutrophil is a predominant cell, fibrin deposition is abundant, and bacteria have disappeared. In this stage, you can auscultate crepitatio redux or crepitation of production of the pneumonia. 
first st stage is resolution. The macrophages reappears as a dominant cell type in the alveolar space, and the debris of neutrophils, bacteria, and fibrin is present. Uh, it couldn't be applied to all pneumonia of all etiology in uh, viral uh, pneumonia or pneumocyst pneumonia. The pathophysiological uh, changes will be a little bit different as in, in viral pneumonia it's mostly interstitial pneumonia compared with bacterial pneumonia which uh, mostly um, involves uh, the wall of alveoli and with or with appearance of inflammatory uh, exudate. By design, pneumonia can be divided into bronchopneumonia, which involves uh, bronchial uh, bronchi tree, small bronchials uh, with the alveoles around them. A lobar pneumonia when the whole lobe of the one lung or maybe uh, several lobes of two lungs are involved in the process. And interstitial pneumonia usually seen in patients with viral pneumonias where inflammation starts not from alveoli uh, but from interstitial connective tissue uh, which surrounds uh, alveoli itself and bronchi itself, uh, and then go inflammation can uh, also go to alveolar wall uh, and those appearance of the uh, exudate. Bronchopneumonia affects one or more lobes, being frequently bilateral and basal, and microscopically one can uh, identify multiple foci of. Uh, congestion, they are usually small ones, white yellowish uh, imperceptibly circumscribed, entered by bronchioli, separated by normal lung parenchyma. Uh, on x-ray here you can see the small areas of pneumonia seen in patients with bronchopneumonia. The same you can see on anatomical example. Lobar pneumonia is a radiological diagnosis and pathological term referring to homogeneous consolidation of one or more lung lobes, often with associated pleural inflammation. Here you can see association of the pleural inflammation, as we can see clearly fissure between two lobes, like clear line ones. Here on this. Uh, Part of the slide, you can see inflammatory changes of the alveolar wall with presence of exudate in them. So, inflammatory uh, lower pneumonia can be, as already said, uh, not one, but in, even um, two lungs, and can, it can be different lobes of the lung, or superior or inferior or uh, middle lobe if we talk about right lung and superior and inferior if we talk about le uh, left lung. Interstitial pneumonia, pneumonia that affects interstitial tissue of the lung, typically uh, you, uh, you can see this typical findings, fibrosis of the both lungs can be seen with honeycomb change involved in the primary the low portion of the lobe. This honeycomb change is uh, clearly seen on the histological uh, slides uh, of the pneumonia and also on CT. Uh, These uh, changes uh, are clearly seen comparing with the X-ray where it's hard to see interstitial pneumonia because dirty glass uh, presentation uh, called for these pneumonias uh, can see only, usually only very experienced uh, uh, and genealogist, but on CT, this honeycomb changes clearly seen. Uh, for clinical presentation, if we talk, a patient should be suspected of having pneumonia if patient has uh, new focal chest signs, new focal chest signs, we mean crackles, whistling, etc., dyspnea, tachypnea, pulse rate more than 100, and fever more than 40. 
taste. The classical physical findings in the lobar pneumonia include uh, evidence of consolidation, which alerted transmission of the breast sounds, agophonia, bronchial breathing, and the whispering uh, pectoral key, uh, crackles, uh, cathartron, hip precip precipitation, redox, and index, uh, changes in the tactile uh, parameters, pleur pleuritic pain, and when consolidated lungs, typical adult percussion. So what kind of general investigation should be done for patient uh, admitted to the hospital with diagnosis of pneumonia? So oxygen saturation and where necessary arterial blood gases in accordance with the latest guideline and especially in patient with uh, suspicion to COVID infection. Chest radiograph to allow accurate diagnosis. Uh, please keep in mind that pneumonia is a radiological diagnosis and each patient suspected um, having pneumonia should be administered or x-ray or CT if uh, X-ray is uh, unavailable or uh, CT is the imagining of choice depending on clinical situation. Of course, uh, you can make clinical diagnosis of pneumonia if you do not have any opportunities to perform imagining studies. And we can uh, make a diagnosis by the clinical signs, uh, or, but uh, uh, in 99% of cases, uh, chest radiograph is the uh, investigation of choice for making diagnosis of pneumonia in each patient with pneumonia should receive X-ray or imagining studies as CT, uh, for example, to uh, make a diagnosis. Also, for patients should be administered urea and electrolytes level to inform severity of, uh, of pneumonia, C-reactive protein to a diagnosis and as baseline measure, full blood count and liver function test as hypoalbuminemia marker of severity. On X-ray findings, a lobar pneumonia looks like homogeneous opacification in the lobar pattern that can be sharply defined uh, at uh, the fissures. Also, more commonly, there is segmental consolidation. The non-opacified uh, bronchus within a consolidating lobe will result in the appearance of air bronchograms. And strictly speaking, consolidation is not associated with the volume loss. However, telectasis can occur with the small airway obstruction. In bronchopneumonia, multiple small nodular or reticular nodular opacities can tend to be patchy and or confluent. This represents area of lung where there are patches of inflammation separated by normal lung parenchyma. The distribution is often bilateral and asymmetric and predominantly involves the lung basis. In interstitial pneumonia, usually X-ray findings, uh, it's uh, around glass opacities combined with irregular linear or reticular opacities can be normal in uh, early stages and there may be ill-defined uh, and or ground glass capacities with lower lobe distribution or consolidation. A bilateral pulmonary infiltrate pattern may be seen in those with advanced stages. So if you will remember uh, how looked uh, uh, interstitial pneumonia or uh, CT uh, as a honeycomb, um, presentation on uh, x-ray of plain explain you can see that there is a no exact shadows of infiltrates comparing for example with lower one and uh, just a small changes in the lower part of the lungs which can be suspected as patient having pneumonia but there is no clear infiltrates so comparing on CT uh, picture, the x-ray picture, not so definitive. <coughs> Sorry. Here's the other two x-rays of the pneumonia here, upper uh, low pneumonia, and there's the inferior uh, lobe pneumonia infiltration scene. 
So when should the chest radiogram be performed at the hospital? All patients admitted to the hospital with suspected uh, pneumonia diagnosis should have a chest radiogram performed as soon as possible to confirm or refute the diagnosis. The objective of any service should be the chest radiogram to be performed in time for antibiotics to be administered within four to six hours uh, of presentation to hospital uh, should the diagnosis of uh, pneumonia confirmed. The chest radiograph uh, need to be repeated prior to hospital discharge and those who have made a satisfactory clinical recovery from pneumonia uh, not need to. And should be arranged after about six weeks for those patients who have persistence of symptoms or physical signs or who are at high risk of underlying malignancy, whether or not they have been admitted to the hospital. Chest radiograph can be repeated if a uh, patient uh, uh, will not show the signs of improvement and you suspect that your diagnosis or your treatment was not uh, successful and especially if patients show you signs of deterioration of his health state. A uh, chest radiograph can be repeated or can be changed to CT for better imagining if it's needed. On CT findings, lower pneumonia looks like uh, have pattern of the focal ground glass opacity in a lower or segmental pattern. This is due to incomplete filling of alveoli by uh, in, uh, inflammatory exudate and the consolidation. At other times, there can be dense opacification of the entire lobe depending on severity of pneumonia. Broken pneumonia on CTE looks like multiple foci of opacity that can be seen in lobular patterns centered uh, at central lobular bronchioles. This may result in a train bud appearance. This foci of consolidation can overlap to create a larger heterogeneous confluent area of consolidation or patchwork kilt appearance. Interstitial pneumonia looks like Ground glass opacities combined with the regular linear or reticular opacities, reticular opacities, sometimes uh, in the minor subpleural reticulation, thickening of bronchovascular bundles uh, with fibrosis. Etiology of pneumonia usually cannot be determined solely on the basis of the clinical presentation and except if a patient with pneumonia admitted to uh, in intensive care unit. No data exists to show that treatment directed at the specific pathogen is statistically superior to empirical therapy. So we have several etiological uh, uh, testing to or, or several uh, actually testing to find the etiology. It can be gram stain and culture of disputum, and it can be blood culture, urinary antigen rapid test, polymerase chain reaction, serological uh, studies, and biomarker specific for pneumonia. Microbiological tests uh, should be performed on all patients with moderate and high severity community acquired pneumonia. The extent of investigation in this patient being guided by severity. For patients with low severity community acquired pneumonia, the extent of microbiological investigation should be guided by clinical factors, including comorbidity, age, severity indicators, and prior antibiotic treatment. Therapy. Uh, when there is a clear microbiological evidence of specific pathogen, empirical antibiotics should be changed to the appropriate pathogen focus or agent unless there are legitimate concerns about dual pathogen infection. Examination on the sputum should be considered for patients who do not respond to empirical antibiotic therapy. Examination of the sputum for mycobacterial tuberculosis should be considered for all patients with a persistent productive cough, especially if malaise, wet loss, and night sweets or risk factors for tuberculosis present. 
In hospitalized adult non-immunocompromised patient, polymicrobial community current pneumonia occurred in up to 26% of cases. And the majority of the studies uh, shown the large proportion of cases with no pathogenic identified, either because the appropriate tests weren't performed or the organism was missed. In patients with age more than 70 years, uh, renal and cardiac comorbidity and non alveolar infiltrates, uh, they all, all were independently associated with a higher proportion of a known etiology of pneumonia appearance. A gram stain etiological test, uh, uh, not recommended in the primary care as gram stain differentiates between organisms with sick peptidoglycan cell wall called gram positive and those with thin peptidoglycan cell walls and the outer membranes that can be dissolved with alcohol or acetone and called gram negative. Gram stain is particularly useful for examining the sputum for polymorphonuclear lymphocytes and bacteria. To be adequate for, for culture, uh, the sputum sample must have more than 25 neutrophils, less than 10 squamous epithelial cells per low power field. And the sensitivity and the speciality of the gram uh, sputum stain are highly variable. A routine performance of uh, or reporting of sputum gram stain on all patients is unnecessary because can aid the laboratory interpretation of culture results. Uh, should be performed when the purulent sputum sample can be obtained from patient with pneumonia. Not recommended in primary care. It's very hard to take uh, uh, definitive example of the sputum to find uh, some bacteria, uh, and this time will be lost for the start of uh, empirical antibacterial treatment and patient. Uh, health state can deteriorate it during the time while you will be searching uh, some bacteria in the sputum uh, performed by the gram stain. A rapid urinary test antigen not recommended in primary care uh, uh, because uh, actually this similar uh, with the gram stain. Uh, we're starting uh, from uh, usually uh, we starts from uh, empirical treatment, but comparing the gram stain don't, don't, doesn't take actually uh, many time uh, to make, but not very cheap. So if your uh, ambulatory or, or outpatient uh, uh, establishment has this test, available, do it, of course, do it. If uh, there is um, no possibility to make this test, it's okay to pass and prescribe antibacterial treatment without them. So we have several antigen tests. It can be a rapid test for streptococcus pneumonia and rapid test for Legionella. Uh, usually it's a uh, uh, detection of their um, antigens of these pathogens in the urine. Uh, these tests are quite sensitive and specific, uh, should be performed uh, for all patients with moderate and high severity of community acquired pneumonia. Uh, Legionella should be performed, uh, Legionella tests should be performed for all patients with high severity of community acquired pneumonia and in other patients where this infection is clinically or epidemiologically suspected. Sputum analysis. Should um, sputum sample in this case should be sent for culture and sensitivity test from patient with community acquired pneumonia of moderate severity who are able to expectorate purulent samples and have not received prior antibacterial treatment. Uh, culture of sputum or other lower respiratory tract samples should also be performed for all patients with high severity of community acquired pneumonia or those who fail to improve. 
Sputum cultures for Legionella should always be attempted for patients who are Legionella urine antigen positive, and Legionella cultures should be routinely performed on invasive respiratory samples uh, obtained by bronchoscopy, usually uh, from patients with immunity chronic pneumonia. Even in cases of proven bacteremic uh, pneumococcal infection, uh, etiology of pneumonia, the yield of positive cultures from the sputum samples is less than 50% of cases. Blood cultures, how to make blood culture? There should be two sets of blood culture from two different veins in all patients of community acquired pneumonia who require hospitalization. The very important uh, part of this is that, that before uh, antibacterial treatment prescription, it should be taken or 10 days after the last dosages of antibacterial drug. If you take uh, blood uh, for the culture in patients who are already receiving antibacterial treatment, the result can be compromised, uh, and you will you know, usually we can cannot receive uh, um, a positive culture uh, test, and each culture test, depending on. Uh, uh, your laboratory takes up to 10 days, so not useful for patients who uh, are uh, who have uh, actually mild uh, community acquired pneumonia and even moderate if it's not required hospitalization. Moderate pneumonia required hospitalization, it's usually a patient who is uh, uh, um, concomitant disorders such as diabetes mellitus or, for example, a chronic heart failure, etc. Where PCR for respiratory viruses and topical pathogens is readily available or obtainable locally, this is preferred to serological investigation, how it happens with COVID infection. In COVID infection, if you suspect it, pneumonia or COVID, even infection without pneumonia, we should administer patient uh, PCR testing if it, if available. Where available, paired serology test can be considered for patients with high severity of community acquired pneumonia where no particular microbiological diagnosis have been made by other means and who fail to improve and where there are particular epidemiological risk factors. The date of onset of symptoms should be clearly indicated to all serological request forms. Serological test may, may be extended to all patients admitted to the hospital with the pneumonia during outbreaks and when needed to be uh, its purpose of surveillance. PCR of respiratory tract samples such as sputum should be method of choice for diagnosis of mycoplasma pneumonia. Chlamydophila antigen and PCR detection tests should be available for invasive respiratory samples from patients with high severity of pneumonia and where there is strong suspicion of PSIDA causes. Combination of immunoglobulin M antibody detection and PCR may be the most sensitive approach to find uh, the cause of the pneumonia. Biomarkers we used in pneumonia uh, need to, we need to assess the presence of bacterial pathogen and they are not recommended in primary care uh, 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 actually uh, not recommended in primary care procalcitonin but white blood cell count uh, as a part of the CBC and C reactive protein nowadays are recommended even in primary care. So biomarkers are white blood cell count, very high, more than 20, or very low, uh, less than four, which is the sign of severe infection, severe sort of pneumonia, C reactive protein and procalcitonin. Procalcitonin, it's a protein that consists of many amino acids and it's peptide precursor of, of calcitonin, which is a hormone that synthesized by parafollicular C cells of the thyroid and involved in calcium homeostasis. Procalcitonin is also produced by neuroendocrine cells of the lung and intestine and released as an acute fast reactant in response to the inflammatory stimuli, especially to those of bacterial origin. This raised procalcitonin level during inflammation is associated with the bacterial endotoxin and inflammatory cytokines. 
Product calcitonin you know, released as an acute phase rectum does not result in increased serum calcitonin levels. Persistent on record procalcitonin elevation in the latter setting after the treatment of bacterial infection should prompt suspicion of secondary infection. Procalcitonin level greater than 0.5 nanogram in liter support bacterial infection where rapidly low amounts suggest that bacterial infection is unlikely. Level of procalcitonin increases when the cell within the 6 to 12 hours after onset of bacterial infection and half daily when infection is controlled. Procalcitonin levels may also be elevated by uh, in patient in case of the patient with medullary carcinoma, carcinoma, small cell lung carcinoma, paralytic vascular ileus exhibiting paraneoplastic production, and the renal failure should not be prescribed for patient with uh, non-severe pneumonia. But for patients with especially severe pneumonia and sepsis, if a physician needs to prove that patient has bacterial infection, severe bacterial infection, procalcitonin should be prescribed. Uh, here you see uh, the level of procalcitonin uh, and uh, the likely and unlikely bacterial infection diagnosis. Uh, can be uh, made. So the high level of procalcitonin is the high bacterial infection or sepsis uh, diagnosis highly likely. C-reactive protein, the most common laboratory marker used in the clinical settings to evaluate systemic inflammatory response to a bacterial in infectious agent. Uh, the recommendation, latest recommendation, is to prescribe the C-reactive protein levels for all patients with pneumonias on the first and the third day uh, to see the actually uh, pneumonia course, how it goes. In ambulatory um, management of pneumonia, if you do not have ability to uh, make it and patient has mild pneumonia and severe pneumonia, it can be skipped. This part can be skipped. CRP, uh, the most common uh, marker, yes, and it's an annular pan, uh, pentametric protein found in the blood plasma. Those levels rise in response to inflammation. It's an acute phase protein of hepatic origin that increases following interleukin 6 secretion by macrophages and T cells. Its physiological role is to bind the lipophosphatidylanine expressed on the surface of the dead or dying cells and sometimes the bacteria in order to activate the complement system via C1Q complex. Synthesized by the liver in response to factors released by macrophages and fat cells, bind to the phosphoalkaline expresses on the surface of the cell and activate a complement system promoting phagocytosis by macrophages, which clears necrotic and apoptotic cells and bacteria. In patients with suspected pneumonia, test for serum level of C-reactive protein can be, should, can be done and should be done in case of severe uh, pneumonia and moderate uh, levels of this protein less than 20 mg by liter on presentation with symptoms more than 24 hours make the presence of pneumonia highly unlikely. Level more than 100 mg by liter makes pneumonia likely. Uh, you should remember that uh, uh, C-reactive protein uh, as acute phase reactant can uh, increase in, in not only in bug, bacteriological infection, but also, for example, when patients with other inflammatory disorders, such as including chronic uh, heart failure, renal failure, myocardial infarction, uh, stroke, and etc. So the, uh, if we want to prove that patient has bacterial infection, uh, the presence of high concentration of CRP is not enough. So the levels should be, as you can see on this slide, more than 100 milligram per liter. If 
but uh, after three days of your treatment, uh, the level of C-reactive protein is rising, means that your treatment not so successful as it you can imagine, and patient should, for patients should be prescribed uh, procalcitin independent on severity of course of the patient, or you should revise your treatment also, as because uh, elevation of C-protein, it's clear marker that bacterial infection uh, spreads and become more serious than at, at the start. What kind of other invasive techniques we can use for diagnosis of pneumonia? There are toracosynthesis, which should be performed in hospitalized patients when a significant pleural effusion is present. Uh, Transthoracic needle aspiration, because of the inherent potential adverse events, can be considered only on individual basis for some severely ill patient with a focal infiltrate and homeless invasive measures have been non diagnostic. And bronchoscopic protected specimen brush and bronchoalveolar lavage and quantitative endotracheal aspirates should be preferred technique in non resolving pneumonia. Bronchoscopic sapling in lower respiratory tract can be considered in intubated patient and selected non intubated patient where gas exchange status allows. This technique also gives a physician possibility to inject uh, the antibacterial treatment exactly in the bronchoalveolar tree if it's needed in severe pneumonia. Do we need any severity assessment uh, for prescription of uh, uh, exact or correct uh, antibacterial treatment? Yes, but clinical judgment, judgment is essential in disease severity assessment. Uh, and even if you don't have any other laboratory and X-ray technique, your clinical judgment is essential and remember it. Uh, when should patient with uh, pneumonia to be referred to the hospital? If it's severely ill patient with suspected pneumonia, uh, especially if uh, patient has tachypnea, tachycardia, hypotension, and confusion problems, which is the sign of severe pneumonia. Patient with pneumonia who failed to respond the antibacterial treatment in ambulatory or outpatient uh, departments, Early patient with pneumonia and elevated risk of complication, notably those who relevant comor has uh, comorbidities such as diabetes, heart failure, COPD, liver disease, renal disease, or cancer. Patient with suspected uh, pulmonary embolism and suspected of malignant disease of the lungs. Uh, also, patient who uh, actually not control themselves or who are uh, will not take medication appropriately uh, due to their uh, age or mental health, they should be referred to the hospital too, as they uh, probably will be non-compliant with the treatment. Uh, severe clinic, uh, clinically severe uh, diagnosis of severe pneumonia can be made uh, by clinical judgment, and this clinical judgment should include the presence of at least two signs, uh, and the, the signs are systolic blood pressure less than 90 uh, millimeters, respiratory uh, failure means that uh, partial pressure of oxygen less than 95 percent involvement of two lobes on the chest x-ray or any other multi-lobar involvement uh, one of, if a patient with pneumonia requires the mechanical ventilation to improve the respiration if a patient with pneumonia requires the best pressure more than four hours to maintain the blood pressure so if you patient if your patient has uh, two of the signs we already listed it's clinically it can be uh, make, make diagnosis of severe pneumonia also we have several tools to help us to assess the severity of pneumonia and they should be used uh, in a routine practice non dependent either it's outpatient or inpatient uh, department so the easiest one is CURB and CRP scales 
uh, they are excellent identificators of mortality. Uh, it's easy to calculate. So if uh, you have uh, outpatient uh, hospital with uh, inability to make urea, you can use CRV scale. If you work in the hospital or outpatient department where the urea uh, levels absolutely you can uh, administer for a patient and to check it use please use your b score uh, these both scores are easy to calculate and they consist from uh, five ma major signs so it's a confusion defined as a mental test uh, score or, or eight or uh, less uh, presence of urea more than seven in millimole by liter, respiratory rate more than 30 in minute, blood pressure systolic less than 90, diastolic less than 60, uh, or, or you just remind that it's or not blood systolic plus diastolic, but or, or low systolic blood pressure, or low diastolic ones, and age more than 65 years. All the signs is a sign of severe pneumonia. Uh, each sign uh, receives one point if it's present, and the uh, total score can be from it, uh, by calculating the total score, we can divide the pneumonia by three major types. So, uh, the mild pneumonia with the score zero to one uh, can be tre treated, patient with such pneumonia can be treated at home. Patient with the moderate pneumonia or score of two should be uh, treated in the hospital, but not in ICU units. And it's suggested as a moderate pneumonia. Uh, can be this patient also can be treated in outpatient departments, but under supervision if they don't have any risk factors. And the severe pneumonia is a score of more than three. This patient, uh, in a, if patient receives such score, they consider it as severe pneumonia patients and they should be treated yeah, in hospital yeah, and uh, the, with a score four or more in ICU departments. Another score we use is pneumonia severity index. It's a little bit more difficult score because it takes um, more points to calculate and to actually uh, more laboratory findings uh, from arterial pH to glucose levels. Uh, this calculation can be used in inpatient uh, uh, in departments also for hospitalized patients and also for hospitalized patients in ICU departments. Uh, comparing with CURB, this scale is uh, sensitive and specific as as your B scores. So in usually in routine outpatient practice we use your B. For patient with hospitalized patient we can we some some doctors prefer pneumonia severity index, but CURB score can be used too. So it's up to you which score you will use in your clinical practice. But uh, the same as in CURB score, calculation of the scores can help you to not only predict mortality, but to choose where patients should be treated. Uh, because for scoring, patient with pneumonia severity index, it would be prudent to ensure initial triage has not missed to presence of SAM steps in the same stories with URB. The higher score is the more specialized uh, department patient should be treated. So from outpatient care, if it's score less than 70 to inpatient admission, uh, uh, inpatient with high risk of mortality, it's usually ICU unit if it's clinical. What kind of patients should be considered for intensive care unit admission? So if for indication, we have several indications, uh, and the presence of one major indication is a minor one. In this presence, patient should be administered in ICU. So major criteria, 
they are hypertension requiring vasopressors, respiratory compromise requiring mechanical ventilation. Minor criteria is respiratory rate more than 30 breaths in minutes, uh, low partial oxygen pressure, multilobar infant rate, confusion and deterioration, blood urea nitrogen more than 20 mg by deciliter, white blood cells low count less than 4 or less than 4,000 uh, cells in millimeter squared, uh, thrombocytopenia, uh, hypothermia and hypotension requiring aggressive fluid or suscitation. All pneumonias can be classified uh, uh, by community acquired pneumonia, which occurs in the absence of immune compromise or prior hospital admission within the previous 30 days. Hospital acquired or nosocomial pneumonia that can occur in anyone resident in hospital uh, more than 48 hours. Ventilator associated pneumonia. Uh, commonly appeared in intensive care unit uh, more than 48 hours after the tracheal intubation, pneumonia of immunocompromised patient, and aspirational pneumonia in patient with the swallowing impairment and neurological impairment. Community acquired pneumonia includes cases of infectious pneumonia in patients living independently in the community. Patients who have been hospitalized for other reasons for less than 40 hours before the development of respiratory symptoms are also considered to have community-acquired pneumonia. The most common uh, pathogens that cause this type of pneumonia in outpatient departments is streptococcus pneumonia, mycoplasma pneumonia, and hemophilus influenza in hospitalized patients. Uh, usually, streptococcus pneumonia has the leading role, but an ACU unit, Staphylococcus aureus, takes the second place uh, comparing with the outpatient. Outpatient patient uh, with Staphylococcus aureus pneumonia is usually a drug addicted person with intravenous uh, drug prescription. Uh, community acquired pneumonia, it's more than 5 million cases annually in the US only, and uh, uh, results in 1.2 million hospitalizations and more than 55,000 uh, of deaths annually. A very frequent uh, uh, disease uh, and unsigned rates that are highest at the uh, patient you know, of extremes of age. It's person um, less than 60, uh, 60 years. Can be divided into typical and atypical forms. Typical community acquired pneumonia uh, caused by typical bacterial pathogens, uh, uh, and they include streptococcus pneumonia, hemophilus influenza, and monocella cateralis, Staphylococcus aureus, Klebsiella, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Uh, uh, present all pneumonia with represented by pulmonary symptoms and typically present with fever, usually with productive cough and often with periodic chest pain. A typical pneumonia is around 15% of cases of all pneumonias and can be divided into zoonotic and non-zoonotic types. Zoonotic pathogens include Chlamydophila, uh, Francisella tuleransis, and Coaxella burnetti. Non-zootopic atypical pathogens include Legionella, Mycoplasma pneumonia, and Chlamydophila pneumonia. This type of uh, pneumonia represented by a variety of pulmonary and extra uh, pulmonary findings, uh, such as Legionella, for example, can be diarrhea, it can be a rash, uh, it can be abdominal pain, etc., which is usually not presented in patients with pneumonia classical type. Uh, often it's subacute process and uh, pneumonia due to a topical pathogen has one or more extra pulmonary features, which is the, actually the key or clue of the etiology. Uh, 
There are risk factors for community acquired pneumonia in general and for pneumococcal pneumonia in particular uh, that have implications for treatment regimen. Risk factors for pneumonia include alcoholism, asthma, immunosuppression, insulinization, and the age over the 70 years. Uh, in early factors such as decreased cough and gut reflexes, uh, as well as reduced antibody and T-like receptor response, uh, increase the likelihood of pneumonia. Risk factors for pneumococcal pneumonia include dementia, seizure disorders, heart failure, cerebrovascular disease, alcoholism, tobacco smoking, COPD, and HIV infection. Uh, Methylene-resistant uh, uh, streptococcus pneumonia are more likely in patients with skin colonization of infection. Enterobacteria tend to infect patients who have recently been hospitalized or received antibiotic therapy or who have comorbidities such as alcoholism or heart or renal failure. Uh, pneumo uh, Pseudomonas sorry, aeruginosa is a particular problem patient with severe. Uh, Structural lung disease such as bronchiectasis, cystic fibrosis, or severe chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Risk factors for Legionella infection include diabetes, hematological malignancy, cancer, severe renal disease, HIV, smoking, male gender, and resident hospital or ship state. Uh, stay, sorry. Uh, for patient with alcoholism, the most frequent etiology of pneumonia is streptococcus pneumonia, oral anaerobes, Klebsiella mycobacterium. If your patient traveled to Southeast Asia, don't forget about uh, Burkholderia pseudomalae and you know, influenza viruses. If patient work in the birds, birds fabric, don't forget about Chlamydia psittacis, possible cause uh, of uh, uh, pneumonia, dementia, stroke, or so decreased level of consciousness patient, uh, the most common infections, oral neurops, gram-negative enteric bacteria. So the key uh, factor for possible pred predisposition or prediction of etiology of the pneumonia is anamnesis taking during your patient observation. Uh, in patients under 65, the working groups uh, think that diabetes and the diagnosis of pneumonia and possibly also asthma risk factors for complication for all age groups, serious conditions such as active malignant disease, liver and renal disease and other disorders are relatively rare primary care but affect immunocompetence uh, do also increase the risk of complication. Uh, so if patient has uh, such uh, possible risk from pres presence of COPD to uh, signs of severe pneumonia, but pulse, temperature, respiratory rate, blood pressure, low blood pressure, uh, malignant disease, uh, antibiotic use in previous three months, general malaise, Recourse to steroid therapy or several hospitalization for the pneumonia at the diagnosis in previous years. This all uh, risk, this all patients should be evaluated as a patient who is elevated risk of the complication and, and uh, uh, poor uh, course of the for possible poor course of the pneumonia itself. So let's talk about typical uh, community acquired pneumonia types. The most common one is pneumococcal pneumonia, it counts up to 80% of community acquired bacterial pneumonias. Uh, the most common uh, found in adults. Uh, uh, Diagnosis of pneumococcal pneumonia can be suspected in case if patient uh, uh, has sudden onset of shaking chills, fever, chest pain, and cough with a rust co rusty colored sputum. X-ray usually shows infiltration of an allobarin distribution, but sometimes patchy. During the resolution of the consolidation, which may require up to 10 weeks, areas of radiolucity may appear, suggesting pseudocavitation. Pneumococcia present in sputum and often in the blood. 
leukocytosis is usually present and typical sputum from pneumonia contains many red and white cells and many pneumococci as you can see on uh, the lower part of the slide. Uh, pneumoconia, pneumonia caused by staphylococcus aureus occurs as a clearly to viral infection of the respiratory tract or in delibitated patients. Uh, and the history of this patient of mild uh, illness, it's a usually mild illness with headache, cough, and generalized aches uh, with abruptly changes to severe illness with a high fever, chills, and exaggerated cough with the purulent or blood strikes, sputum, and deep cyanosis. The diagnosis must be confirmed by the stain smear of sputum uh, and culture, and also by means of the cultures of pleural fluid and uh, the blood. X-ray examination reveals lung consolidation, pneumocele, abscesses, and PM and pneumothorax. The demonstration of pure pneumothorax and the cavities with air fluid levels suggests Staphylococcus aureus. The white cell count usually more than uh, 20,000 of uh, uh, cells. On uh, CT here, you can see necrotizing cavitate in pneumonia with destruction of the uh, lung parenchyme uh, and appearance of cavity. Here also you can see X-ray of the patient with uh, staphylococcal pneumonia uh, uh, with appearance uh, of uh, pneumatocele uh, and um, PM may be starting and also uh, lung consolidation areas. Methylene uh, resistant uh, staphylococcal uh, pneumonia uh, diagnosis should be based on the clinical presence of fever more than 38 uh, degrees of Celsius, cyanosis, tachycardia, hematopsis, hypotension, and the rapid cavitation of infiltrates on the chest radiographs. Uh, presence of bacteria in the respiratory secretion, and uh, usually this type of pneumonia appears in the patient with risk factors such as cardiopulmonary disease, alcoholism, or diabetes, or patient who previously uh, were treated uh, due to several reasons uh, many, uh, many, many times with antibacterial drugs. Consolidation for treatment of this pneumonia, the drug of choice is linizolid or one for mycin, as these uh, types of uh, staphylococcus are not uh, actually um, uh, sensitive to usual uh, antibacterial treatment. Uh, the typical pneumonia, there are several times. The most common is Legionella pneumonia. Uh, this eponym Legionella's disease have been given to a serious pneumonia that affected people attend the American Legion Convention in Philadelphia in 1976. And other outbreaks have been diagnosed retrospectively at least uh, since 1965 and sporadic infection occurred at least 1947 in many places. Uh, typically, it's a pneumonia with extra pulmonary uh, symptoms. And the most common source of infection is the water supply. Uh, so pools uh, transmitted from person to person. And uh, jealous species in, occurs in the environment and acquired by humans from aerosols. Uh, dust for, for, from air conditioning systems, water, soil, incubating period, period is estimated to be two to 10 days. Initial symptoms are malaise, diffuse malgeas, headache, or by uh, up to 48 hours by high non remittent fever and chills. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea frequent. On the third day, dry cough begins, so uh, that is non productive or produces scantily mucoid, sometimes blood streaked sputum. Dyspnea and hypoxia become marked as a sign of consolidation developed. 
A pleuritic pain uh, are also present and occurs in one third of patient and uh, severe confusion or delirium may occur. As you can see on this picture, the journalia is poorly rumstained negative bacterium that grows slowly on the specific media. And for diagnosis of the, this pneumonia, well, uh, we have rapid urine test for the journalia antigens. On the chest x-ray looks like patchy, often multilobar pulmonary consolidation and occasional small pleural infection on all anatomical um, uh, slide presented here. Mycoplasma pneumonia, it's the second the most frequent atypical form of uh, community acquired pneumonia, mycoplasma, it's a common cause. And disease uh, usually has prolonged and gradual onset. Uh, it was at first isolated uh, in the cattle with pleural pneumonia in 1898. PCR or respiratory tract samples such as sputum should be the method of choice for the diagnosis of this pneumonia. And the patient's uh, history may include fever, general low grade, malaise, headache, persistent slowly worsening in sand cup, scratches or throat, wheezing, mild pharyngeal infection with the minimal or non cervical adenopathy, but no exudate, normal lung findings with early infection, but ronky rails and the whistle several days later. Uh, treatment of choice is tetracycline and erythromycin compounds, uh, which are very effective. Viral cause uh, are up to 50% of pathogen diagnosed community acquired pneumonia. Uh, 27 of cases are mixed bacteria virus. Immunofluorescent uh, scent assay and enzyme like immunosorbent assay are useful for the diagnosis, especially the most common viruses encountered in influenza, respiratory virus, syncytial virus, adenovirus, and para influenza virus. PSCR is highly sensitive and specific technique for amplifying genes to detect the presence of the virus. Viral cultures used for isolation the identification of the pathogen but takes more time and not so effective comparing with pcr or elisa a respiratory virus by the airway they multiply many epithelium of upper uh, airway secondly infect the lung by means of the airway secretion and hematogenous spread Respiratory virus damage the respiratory tract and stimulate the host to release multiple humoral factors. As histamine, leukotriene, and virus specific immunoglobulin, interleukin, inflammatory interleukins 1, 6, and 8. And uh, they can alter bacterial colonization patterns. They increase bacterial adherence to respiratory epithelium, reduce microcellular clearance, and alter bacterial phagocytosis with host cells. Also, uh, uh, releasing of uh, pro inflammatory cytokines in case of the respiratory virus, especially. Uh, can cause cytokine storm, which can uh, deteriorate the patient's uh, state and uh, leads to respiratory distress syndrome or similar clinics, similar clinical uh, presentation with respiratory failure. Viral pneumonia on the chest X-ray looks like lateral involvement. Uh, in case of influenza, it's perihelar and peribronchial infiltrates. In case of respiratory virus, it's uh, rather patchy bilateral alveolar infiltrates and interstitial changes. And then the viral pneumonia looks like bilateral and patchy ground glass infiltrates with the uh, preference uh, uh, for lower lobes. Treatment usually it's antiviral drugs and secondary antibacterial treatment uh, yeah, as the viruses uh, influence the bacterial uh, flora appears uh, and in the patient with uh, initially viral pneumonia. So patient at worst should be observed for 
or bacterial uh, etiology secondary to viral ones and this uh, uh, should be first quite antibacterial treatment if we talk about antibacterial treatment of community acquired pneumonia it has to be empirical and should follow an approach according to the individual risk of mortality which can be obtained by using the scales we talked previously so crb crb or pneumonia severity index there are several types of antibacterial drugs we use for treatment and they can be divided into two major uh, type of drug classes is but bacteriostatic which doesn't allow the bacteria to grow and to reproduce itself and put it into stasis so which in which uh, bacteria can be easily phagocyte by uh, macrophages or uh, to killers uh, uh, and eliminated from our body. All bacteria they have um, ability to destruct the bacterial wall and to kill bacteria uh, and to help our uh, organism to phagocyte the parts of bacteria. Uh, according to the uh, spectrum of action, can be broad spectrum antibacterial uh, drugs. Some um, and narrow spectrum addicted to only the several pathogens. Uh, there are different classes of antibacterial drugs from beta lactams to lipopeptide. They differ in their uh, structure and uh, in mode of action. Some of beta lactams inhibit bacterial cell wall by synthesis other ones as macrolides which were uh, described um, later than the beta lactams they can have ability to inhibit protein synthesis by bacteria and occasionally lead to the cell death and the later one of the latest one like lipopeptide they can for example uh, disrupt the uh, multiple cell membrane function leading to the um, bacterial cell death also. Uh, according to the site of action, uh, uh, antibacterial drugs can or bind to ribosome and inhibit protein synthesis or inhibit DNA synthesis of the bacteria or RNA polymerase synthesis or inhibit the cell wall synthesis and lead to the, the death. Uh, but uh, bacteria, uh, not only humans, uh, are constantly in evolution, but the bacteria can do the same. So they have several mechanisms of resi resistance, especially to uh, uh, penicillin uh, uh, or beta lactams, uh, uh, antibacterial drugs. So. Uh, they have increasing uh, they can as they can increase the permeability barriers, activate some exam, enzymes, and we will need to prescribe uh, uh, antibacterial drugs that have ability uh, to convert these bacteria despite their uh, mechanisms of resistance. What kind of guides we have for um, per condition microbial treatment? Um, and there are three major considerations and overall 10 criteria. So patient uh, age 65 years are subdivided into those with moderate good ability and uh, uh, those who are severely disabled, the assessment of general prognosis should be performed and patient with pneumonia expected terminal event of severe comorbidity should be managed along principles of palliative medicine. Previous hospitalization and antibacterial treatment should be taken into account too, so patients with hospitalization more than three months ago less than sorry, some months ago and those who are repeated recent antibacterial treatments should be classified as nosocomial pneumonia and treated accordingly. Risk factors for severe immune suppression, this patient should be managed as an immunocompromised patient. Uh, assessment of the factor determines selection of the antibacterial treatment. 
Also, severity has only one major uh, minor impact on microbial pattern, broad combination treatment is mandatory in order to cover all potential pathogens and prevent excess mortality with the treatment failure. Comorbidity is a sign of possible severe course of the bacteria, so uh, I usually uh, different comorbidities in patients with comorbidities with respect to some uh, potential underlying pathogens and uh, an antibacterial treatment can be prescribed based on these uh, evidences. Um, patients who live in nursing home, uh, they have uh, such their specific microbial patterns and such risk should be assessed individually. Aspiration may be witnessed or suspected, so patient uh, should be treated as aspiration of pneumonia, not as community acquired. Uh, also exist regional and local patterns of microbial prevalence and resistance. So in one area, we prescribe toxicity for as a drug of choice for you know, pneumonia treatment, community acquired pneumonia. In other areas, we will prescribe maybe uh, macrolides. Uh, because the cystic is not uh, actually working due to um, microbial resistance. Maybe some drugs was, were prescribed previously in a high range of cases, and that's why microbes have well, their, their resistance. And vulnerability and toxicity of antimicrobial agents individually for patients should be taken into account when you are cho choosing for empirical treatment for the patient. All patients should receive antibiotics as soon as diagnosis of community acquired pneumonia confirmed by the chest radiography. If don't have ability to confirm by the chest radiography, so make the diagnosis uh, can be made. The, um, clinically, but it's preferable to prove for your clinical uh, source by the radiography. In patient with uh, community acquired pneumonia and septic shock, delay must not be uh, more than one hour after diagnosis, and uh, drugs should be prescribed as fast as is possible. The objective for any service call shouldn't be uh, not to confirm a diagnosis of pneumonia with the chest radiography, initiate antibiotic therapy for the majority of the patient with community acquired pneumonia only up to six hours of presentation to hospital. The oral route is recommended in those with low and moderate severity pneumonia admitted to hospital, provided uh, there are no contraindication or to oral therapy. Patient treated initially with parental antibiotics should be transferred to an oral regimen as soon as clinical improvement occurs and the temperature has been normal for 24 hours, proving there is no contraindication to the oral route. Patient response to therapy should be re-evaluated at about 48 to 72 hours. Uh, soon if their condition is worsening rather than simply not improving. Response to treatment should be monitored by simple clinical criteria, including body temperature, respiratory and hemodynamic parameters. And the same parameters should be applied to judge the suitability of hospital discharge. non response pneumonia occurring in the first 72 hours of admission is usually due to antimicrobial resistance or unusually virulent organism or a host defense defect. Non-response after 72 hours is usually due to a complication. Slowly resolving pneumonia should be reinvestigated according to the clinical needs, the condition of the patient, and his or her individual risk factors. Treatment option for ambulatory patient with community acquired pneumonia, as you remember, it's mild or moderate uh, patient. So recommendation of uh, last year's uh, suggests that the healthy Outpatient adults without comorbidities listed as a risk factors. For them, recommended uh, to start treatment of community part pneumonia with amoxicillin one gram three days, three times daily, or doxycycline monotherapy one hundred milligrams twice daily, 
or macrolides. Uh, it can be azithromycin uh, or clementromycin, uh, only in areas where the pneumococcal resistance to macrolides uh, not present. Uh, Outpatient adults with comorbidities such as chronic uh, heart failure, lung or liver failure, or renal disease, uh, chronic diabetes mellitus, alcoholism, malignancy, or asthenia, or it's recommended combination to start treatment with community chronic pneumonia with combined therapy of amoxicillin clavulinate or um, uh, amoxicillin uh, clavulinate can be two ranges of do dosages. Or 500 milligrams or uh, um, 100 milligrams uh, or 2000 uh, 2, milligrams, uh, or it can be cephalosporin uh, in combination with macrolide, or it can be a monotherapy with respiratory fluorokine alone. So, usually uh, we are starting from combination therapy if after 72 hours is not working, we can change it to monotherapy. Or if patient previously was treated by amoxicillin or osparin, so it's macrolide not dependent on the cost of this, or what kind of uh, indication for this treatment, uh, less than uh, if this treatment appears less than three months uh, before this hospitalization or this uh, patient observation, uh, we can start from monotherapy with respiratory and fluoroquine alone if needed. Patients should be advised to return if the symptoms take uh, longer than three weeks to disappear after the treatment we finished. Uh, clinical effect of antibiotic treatment should be expected within three days and patients should be instructed to contact their doctor if this effect is, is not, not noticeable. If uh, a patient is in hospital, no contact needed, you will contact yourself. Seriously ill patient, meaning those with suspected pneumonia and elderly patient with relevant comorbidity should be followed up to, uh, two days after the first visit. Just radiographic abnormalities are the slowest to resolve, and the uh, patient can have uh, pneumonia signs on X ray infiltration signs or on X rays up to 12 weeks so, with the speed of clearance depending on the patient age and underlying lung disease. That's why a uh, patient with mild to moderate pneumonia and no X ray need to be repeated if a uh, patient shows signs of clinical improvement and there is no uh, serious comorbidities which can uh, deteriorate the hyphen state and to complication. For a patient with community acquired pneumonia who was hospitalized but not in intensive care unit, our recommendations to start your treatment from combination therapy of beta lactam with macrolide or monotherapy of respiratory fluoroquinolone. The third option for these adults who have contraindication to macrolides of fluoroquinolones is combination therapy of beta lactam with doxycycline. How patients should be monitored in the hospital? So temperature, respiratory rate, pulse, blood pressure, mental status, oxygen saturation, and inspired oxygen concentration should be monitored and recorded initially at least twice daily and more frequently in those with severe pneumonia or requiring regular oxygen therapy. C-reactive protein should be remeasured and the chest radiograph repeated in patients who are not progressing satisfactorily after three days of treatment. Patients should be uh, reviewed within 24 hours of planned discharge home, and those suitable for discharge should not have more than one of the following characteristics present. They are uh, uh, temperature more than 37.8, heart rate more than 100 in minute, respiratory rate more than 24 in minute, systolic blood pressure less than 90 millimeters, oxygen saturation less than 90%, inability to eat without assistance and abnormal mental status. Clinical review should be arranged for all patients in around six weeks, either with their general practitioner or in hospital clinic as it's possible. For patients who fail to improve as expected, 
and there should be careful review by an experienced clinician of the clinical history, examination, prescription chart, and the results of available investigation results. Further investigation including an RP chest radiography, uh, C-reactive protein and white cell count, and further specimens for microbiological testing should be considered in the light of any new information after the clinical review. Sorry. A referral to a respiratory physician should be considered. Change initial antibacterial therapy in case, if needed, should be made. For patients with uh, severe community acquired uh, pneumonia who requires treatment in intensive care unit or intermediate care, uh, the treatment of uh, pneumonia should be started from combination of beta-lactam plus either azithromycin, azithromycin or fluoroquinolone. It's usually intravenous uh, regimens comparing with the previous uh, regimens uh, already discussed. If you suspect the, or you made uh, uh, um, testing for pseudomonas, uh, is a consideration. Uh, beta lactams with anti pseudomonal activity uh, or levofloxacin should be prescribed. The above beta lactams plus aminoglucoside uh, plus azithromycin is an option of treatment too. The above beta lactams plus aminoglucoside plus anti pneumococcal fluoroquinolone. If you suspect uh, methylene resistance to filococcus aureus, uh, treatment the drug of choice is imizalid or one comycin intravenously. Uh, doxycycline is an alternative to the macrolides and can be prescribed. Uh, respiratory fluoroquinolone should be used for penicillin allergic patients. And what kind of uh, treatment duration we should expect or we should be oriented uh, to? Uh, so the guidelines recommend the duration of antibacterial treatment should be guided by the validated measure of clinical stability. So it's a resolution of vital sign abnormalities. Vital sign includes heart rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure, oxygen saturation, and temperature, ability to eat, and normal mentation. And antibiotic therapy should be continued until the patient achieves stability or for no less than a total five days. Uh, previously, for patients with uncomplicated pneumonia, uh, the treatment uh, duration was from 7 to 10 days, usually, um, and required longer for patients with typical types of community-acquired pneumonia. In case of non-complicated pneumonia, monotherapy, uh, small courses of azithromycin or fluoroquinolones uh, can be enough for pharmacodynamics due to pharmacodynamics of uh, medication in patient with ICU unit or usually uh, antibacterial treatment becomes long enough to 14 to 21 days due to severity of pneumonia and slower improvement of the patient uh, symptoms. Uh, should be uh, a patient with community acquired pneumonia, especially in patients that are treated with corticosteroid. Uh, usually, uh, this treatment, a good treatment with corticosteroids, not routinely recommended, especially for patients with non severe cough. Uh, for patients with severe cough, a routinely prescription of corticosteroids are not recommended too, as they not only inflammatory have, but also they have um, uh, immunosuppressive activity and can lead to uh, increasing of severity of bacterial infection. Uh, in patients with sepsis uh, and severe uh, respiratory septic shock, or in patients with uh, actually um, cardiovascular shock, uh, prescription of corticosteroid can be used. Uh, for patients who suspected to have uh, influenza as the initial factor of pneumonia, um, 
uh, recommendation recommend that the standard antibacterial treatment uh, should be initially prescribed for adults with clinical radiographic signs of pneumonia who test positively on influenza and outpatient in inpatient departments as uh, viruses uh, improve or help bacteria to colonize respiratory tract and uh, non-prescription of antibacterial drugs can cause actually complications. Uh, do we need to prescribe antiviral drugs for patients who have positive tests for influenza? Yes, we should. So it's usual anti-influenza treatment such as Eltamivir, uh, for example, uh, that should be prescribed for a patient. Uh, who, who was testing positive to influenza uh, independent on duration or uh, of illness before a diagnosis. Uh, aspirational pneumonia uh, is the other type of pneumonia defined as an entry of foreign substances, solid uh, uh, or liquid, uh, into the respiratory tract or inhalation of fumes and vapors. All this we call aspiration. Aspiration of pneumonia is an infectious process caused by aspirated oropharyngeal flora. The clinical history is important in diagnosing of aspiration of pneumonia, the nature of aspirate material, the quantity of aspirate material, um, the time of course of the event influence the size and distribution of the lung parenchymal abnormality and the most common predisposing factor for the aspiration in adults are alcoholism, stroke or other neuromuscular disorders, seizures and loss of the consciousness. Uh, this type of pneumonia should be considered in patients with difficulties of swallowing who show signs of acute lower respiratory tract infection. In this patient, chest x-rays should be performed. Uh, Predisferon poison factors include the impairment of the swallowing mechanism, inadequate cough reflex in patients, especially anesthesia of postoperative state, and impaired uh, gastric empty emptying, for example, in pyloric obstruction. When should be aspirational pneumonia suspected in those with community acquired pneumonia, with either follows an episode of witness aspiration or occurs the presence of risk in presence of the risk of aspiration. Traditionally, posterior anterior and lateral chest radiographs have been recommended for imaging aspirational pneumonia and in its complication. CT scanning is the best method for diagnosing aspirational pneumonia and abscess or NPMI. CT scanning by precisely delineates the location of the lobar or segmental opacity. A foreign body in the tracheobronchial tree and associated antelectasis or consolidation can be defined with relative ease of the CT scans. MRI is more sensitive than planar radiography but less than CT and patient swollen mechanism can be studied by using a fluoroscopy with a contrast agent in real life. Radionuclear saliva gram can demonstrate the aspiration of the saliva and can document salivary aspiration as a source of recurrent pneumonia. For uh, aspirational pneumonia, an empirical antibiotic therapy should be initiated rapidly once the diagnosis of pneumonia is made. The regime can be modified later after culture. Information from the sputum, tracheal secretion, or bronchoscopic sampling, uh, if available. Our recommendation, so in patient uh, in hospital ward admitted from home, the drug of choice is uh, oral or intravenous regimens of beta-lactam with or clindamycin or cephalosporin in combination with metronidazole or moxifloxacin. In patient who was administered in ICU unit or, or administered from nursing home, uh, Combination therapy of clindamycin and cephalosporin or cephalosporin with metronidazole is a drug of choice for treatment of such patients. Hospital acquired or another comel pneumonia. It's a pneumonia that occurs 48 hours or more after admission and did not appear to be incubated at the time of the admission. 
So now latest recommendation recommend to abandon this categorization and emphasis on the local epidemiology and validate risk factors to determine need for MRSA or pseudomonas uh, aeruginosa coverage. Increased emphasis on the excavation of treatment if cultures are negative. Usually the most common cause of death among the old patient uh, and with mortality rates up to 33%. Uh, healthcare associated pneumonia, it's a bacterial infection that occurs in people who are living in long term care facilities or have been treated in outpatient clinics, including kidney dialysis centers, uh, and the usual pathogens uh, that can cause these pneumonia. It's MRSA, omethylene resistant uh, Staphylococcus aureus, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Acetinobacter, or a uh, different type of uh, bacteria. Uh, inhalation, inspiration, and hematogenous spread are the three main mechanisms for which bacteria reach the lungs and the development of this type of pneumonia presents an imbalance between normal host defense and the ability of microorganisms to colonize and then invite the lower respiratory tract. Uh, what kind of factors are predisposed in this pneumonia? It's reduced host defense against bacteria due to immune deficiency or reduced cough, reflex, or uh, disordered mucosolar clearance. Also, it's inspiration of nasopharyngeal or gastric secretion due to immobility or reduced consciousness level, vomiting, dysphagia, uh, achalasia, or severe reflux, or another gastric intubation. Uh, third factor is bacteria introduced into the lower respiratory tract due to intubation tracheostomy or infected ventilators nebulized as bronchoscopes, dental or sinus infection. And the last one is bacteriemia due to abdominal sepsis, possible avicanular infection or infected emboli as in patient with uh, mean coxemia, for example. This type of pneumonia often first suspected with a demonstration of new or worsening radiographic infiltrates along with the clinical signs of infection, including fever, leukocytosis, and the purulent sputum. The clinician must evaluate various findings that are not specific to nosocomial pneumonia, including the following. It's a fever, elevated blood blood cell count, worsening oxygenation, new worsening pulmonary infiltrate comfortable with the bacterial pneumonia. Uh, it's not diagnosed based on respiratory secretion cultures. Physical findings are usually not specific. Uh, while blood cell common can be normal or elevated, and degree of the left shift indicates the degree of stress in the host. And clinical findings of uh, uh, MRSA pneumonia, it's a rapid cavitation, high fevers, uh, or cyanosis, or end cyanosis. How to treat? Traditionally, uh, have been treated for 7 to 14 days. However, ventilator associated pneumonia can be successfully treated in 7 days. Uh, last recommendation recommend to treat uh, uh, until the patient will show the signs of improvement. Uh, direct empiric coverage against the most common nosocomial pathogens uh, needed and coverage against pseudomonas arginosa also covers other nosocomial pneumonia uh, pathogens. So if uh, suspected pathogen uh, is, uh, for example, Clostridium pneumonia, Eclipsiella pneumonia, it's Bithylactam, uh, um, treatment of, uh, with combination with out uh, anti-pseudomonal fluoroquinolones. If a potential pathogen is streptococcus pneumonia, steptrexone treatment or levofloxacin treatment. If legionella pneumonia is suspected, it's aminoglycoside plus vancomycin to cover pseudomonas aeruginosa. Ventilator associated pneumonia is a type of uh, pneumonia that develops more than 48 to 72 hours uh, after endotracheal intubation in hospitalized patients. Uh, we have specific uh, pulmonary infection score uh, to measure severity of ventilator-associated pneumonia. 
uh, active calculations, core more than six at baseline or at 72 hours, consider it suggestive as pneumonia. Uh, if less than six, six uh, after 72 hours, patient probably doesn't have pneumonia, antibiotics probably can be stopped. The so score include the uh, uh, ranges of temperature, blood, blood leukocyte level, tracheal secretion and um, pathogenetic uh, bacteria culture presence of growth or not and uh, radiograph findings so the similar story calculation of the voice and then give them uh, opportunity to produce both to suggest patient has pneumonia or not the major factor in selection of agents that there are uh, in presence of the risk factors uh, so patient without risk factors for uh, pathogens uh, can be treated with uh, ceftriaxone or moxifloxacin or ampicillin, flibactam or epipinin. If patient has some dear pathogen risk uh, uh, for presence, patient should be treated with a uh, combination of beta-lactam and the second agent, actin, uh, uh, agent sorry, active against gram-negative bacterial pathogens or agent uh, active with uh, gram-positive bacterial pathogens as limited it or one comma seen uh, multi drug resistant bacteria requires uh, more uh, complex treatment than other ones. Uh, the standard recommendation recommendation for a patient with the risk factor of multi drug resistant infection is uh, the prescription of three antibacterial drugs, two of them directed against uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and one of them uh, directed against methylene uh, resistance to Staphylococcus aureus infection. In immunocompromised patients, usually uh, uh, have such clinical features as fever, cough, or breathlessness, but are influenced by the degree of immunosuppression. Symptoms are less specific in this more profoundly in uh, the most more profoundly immunosuppressed patients, the speed of onset tends to be less rapid in patients with opportunistic organism. Uh, symptoms, for example, of cough or breathlessness can be present for several days or weeks before the onset of systemic symptoms or the appearance of X-ray abnormalities. Uh, in patients with defective phagocytic function, uh, uh, who usually what kind, of, what kind of patient they are? It's usually acute leukemia, cytotoxic drugs, or granulocytosis, uh, which cause uh, immunocompromisation. The, uh, the most possible uh, cause of the um, uh, pneumonia is a gram positive bacteria, including Staphylococcus aureus. If patient uh, has defects of cell uh, mediated immunity, for example, if patient with lymphoma, or timic aphasia, plasia, sorry, uh, the most common cause of pneumonia in this case is viruses or fungal infection. In patient with detection of antibody production, defects of antibody production, it's a patient with multiple myeloma or chronic lymphocytic leukemia. The most common cause of uh, uh, pneumonia in this case is hemophilus influenza or mycoplasma pneumonia. Uh, on CT, pneumocystis carni pneumonia, the most frequent uh, pneumonia in patient with uh, HIV infection, and uh, in this case, CT is useful for differentiating uh, the likely cause. So, focal neonatal airspace of pacification favors bacterial pneumonia, mycobacteria, or nocardia. Bilateral pacification fa favors uh, pneumocystis cerevechi pneumonia, fungi, viruses or unusual bacteria. Cavitation may be seen in uh, asteroids, mycobacteria, or fungi as a cause of pneumonia. The presence of halocyanin may, may suggest aspergillus, and pleural effusion suggests pyogenic bacterial infection and uh, are common for pneumocyst cervici pneumonia. The diagnosis is made by the lung bioscope biopsy and the demonstration of typical cyst of pneumocystic army and impression smear of plant tissue stained with vitamin C.
complication of pneumonia includes appearance of abscesses, MPMA, parapneumonic effusion uh, due to retention of the sputum causing the lower collapse, uh, deplane thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, pneumothorax, particularly staphylococcus aureus uh, pneumonias, superiority pneumonia and lung abscesses, especially staphylococcus aureus, streptococcus, uh, acute respiratory distress uh, syndrome, renal failure, multi-organ failure, ectopic abscess formation, hepatitis, pericarditis, myocarditis, meningoencephalitis, uh, and pyrexia due to drug hypersensitivity. Lung abscess appearance uh, will be represented by the symptoms such as cough with the large amount of the sputum, sometimes fetid and blood stain, pleural uh, pain common, a sudden expectoration of copious amounts of the full sputum and of the abscess or ruptures of the bronchus, uh, higher emitting pyrexia uh, with profound systemic upset. Uh, digital clubbing may develop quickly up to 14 days. Consolidation of chest examination, signs of cohabitation, pleural rub is a common. A rapid deterioration in general health with marked weight loss uh, if uh, not adequately treated. Amphoric breast sound during auscultation if bronchus is connected with abscess. Our uh, treatment is recommended uh, with usage of regime such as clindamycin uh, or uh, IV administered beta lactam combination for once the patient condition is stable by oral IV administered amoxicillin clomonoglonate. Acute respiratory distress syndrome is characterized by an increase uh, in permeability by alveolar capillary barrier leading to influx of fluid into alveoli. The alveolar capillary barrier is formed by the, by the microvascular uh, endothelium and the epithelial lining of the alveoli. Uh, hence, a variety of insults result in damage either to the vascular endothelium or to alveolar epithelium uh, could result in acute respiratory syn syndrome, distress syndrome. The main side of uh, uh, injury may be focused on either the vascular epithelium or the alveolar epithelium. Uh, for example, in case of aspirational gastric content, uh, injury to the endothelium results in increased capillary permeability and the influx of protein rich fluid into the alveolar space. Injury, uh, injury to the alveolar lining cells also promote pulmonary edema formation. Cytokines, pro inflammatories like uh, tumor necrosis factor, leukotrienes, macrophages, inhibitory factor, and other numerous ones, along with the platelet sequestration and activation, are also important in the development of this uh, syndrome. Uh, all complex uh, still remains incompletely understood. Microscopic lungs from uh, affected individuals in the early stages show diffuse alveolar damage with alveolar flooding by protein and nutritious fluid, neutrophil influx into the alveolar space, loss of alveolar epithelial cells, deposition of hyaline membranes on the genuated basement membrane, and formation of microtrophy. We do have uh, the Berlin definition of acute respiratory uh, distress syndrome, which include that a patient with uh, respiratory distress syndrome within a week of known clinical assault or new or worsening respiratory symptom, it appears. The chest imagining shows bilateral opacities not fully explained by effusion, lower or lung collapse, or nodules. Respiratory failure not fully explained by the cardiac failure or fluid overload and the origin of edema uh, not, uh, not associated with these um, causes and, and need of objective assessment to exclude hydrostatic edema uh, if no risk factor present. Oxygenation can be mild, moderate, and severe depending on the partial oxygen pressure. Sorry. 
clinical picture consists of development of acute dyspnea hypoxemia up to 48 hours uh, to days uh, on inciting event with the onset of lung injury patient initially no dyspnea with exertion, tachypnea, tachycardia. Patient may be febrile or hypothermic, a synosis of the lips and nail beds present. Bilateral rails or rails may not be present despite widespread involvement. Manifestation of the underlying cause, uh, uh, partial oxygen pressure less than 300, leukopenia or leukocytosis may be noted. Multiple cytokines, cytokines especially pro-inflammatory, are elevated in the serum. Presence of bilateral uh, pulmonary infiltrate, diffuse or symmetric or asymmetric present uh, and may be found on X-ray on CT. Culture material may be obtained by wedging uh, the bronchoscope. Treatment uh, uh, usually uh, the cause of the treatment is uh, initiate the volume and pressure, limited ventilation, or improvement of oxygenation of the patient with uh, minimizing of acidosis and uh, maintenance of diuresis to avoid hypoperfusion. Uh, Hemodynamic management consists of fluids vasopressors with selective pulmonary vasodilators to improve uh, circulation inside of the lungs. Surfactant replacement therapy to improve uh, perfusion. Anti inflammatory strategies consist of uh, corticosteroids, alipoxinase, and cyclogenase inhibitors, isophilin or pentoxifilin, and presence of antioxidants and uh, anticoagulants uh, to improve not only uh, um, blood circulation, but uh, also perfusion in affected areas. Uh, prevention of pneumonia, consists of two major strategies. First one is pneumococcal vaccine administration. The second one is influenza vaccine administration. Both of vaccination uh, uh, and also uh, smoking cessation during hospitalization leads to decreased risk of appearance of pneumonia and alternation of or deterioration of the health state of the patient by this pneumonia appearance. So pneumococcal vaccine is recommended to administer for all patients uh, with age more than 65 years. Incidentalization means for nursing home, uh, living patient, uh, dementia, seizure disorders, congestive heart failure, cerebrovascular disease, uh, chronic pulmonary disease, history of previous pneumonia or liver disease, uh, diabetes mellitus, uh, asplenia due to uh, different causes, and chronic uh, cerebrospinal uh, fluid leakage, uh, who are administered with uh, community called pneumonia, who have not previously received pneumococcal vaccine. They should receive 23 valent pneumococcal vaccine, and uh, after five years should be vaccinated for asplenic patients. Influenza vaccine is recommended for patients older than 65, residents of long-term care facilities, chronic pulmonary or cardiovascular disease. Hospitalization is a percent in the year, immunosuppressive patient, pregnant woman on the second trimester during flu season. Repeated vaccination safe and not lead to decreased immune response. Uh, our new plug for uh, 21st century uh, is COVID associated pneumonia, and as you know, COVID is beta coronavirus uh, in the same subgenus of this as the severe uh, acute respiratory syndrome viruses. And the structure of the receptor binding gene region is very similar to SARS coronaviruses. And the virus have been shown to use the same receptor. Uh, it's antiotensin converting enzyme uh, to enter the cell. And there are widespread of these receptors, especially in, in, in the pulmonary tree and also in the GI system. Uh, so, uh, in the incubation period uh, of classic type. 
uh, estimated as up to 24 days, usually it's uh, seven days incubation, uh, frequently are reported uh, signs and symptoms of patients admitted to the hospital include fever, dry cough, myomalgy or fatigue, shortness of the breast at the illness onset, uh, severe cases up to 15% per in, in ICU, 5% uh, adult on the middle age and older, and older are most commonly affected. Right now with uh, British STEM uh, and so second this um, uh, statistic a little bit changed. So right now not only adult patients, uh, the most affected, but also the young one and children too. Uh, if previously a symptomatic infection in children appears to be uncommon, right now it's present and even severe cases and on, on not, not all of these patients uh, have severe, uh, immune comor severe comorbidities or immune compromised. Uh, symptomatic infection have also been described. Uh, frequency is unknown, uh, but it's frequent, especially uh, the great transmitters are children. Mild illness, usually it's a patient who is uncomplicated upper respiratory tract viral infection with no, they may have no symptom at all or at least non specific, uh, they can have non specific sim symptoms. Uh, moderate uh, infection represents by pneumonia. Uh, mild to moderate uh, and no need for supplemental oxygen and severe pneumonia and severe uh, infection uh, are represented by pneumonia that requires uh, with, uh, uh, oxygen actually supplemental oxygen and sometimes still intubation uh, to improve uh, oxygen metabolism. They have uh, cough and signs of respiratory infection with the signs of, of uh, instability of respiratory rate. Uh, what in surgery, uh, severe respiratory distress and poor uh, partial oxygen uh, pressure less than 93 in the room air. Uh, the most severe uh, uh, form of this infection is the appearance of acute respiratory distress syndrome and septic shock. Sometimes if a uh, patient uh, has severe form of COVID infection. Clinically uh, also represented by leukopenia or leukocytosis with lymphopenia uh, was reported, uh, eliminated aminotransferase level described. Uh, patient uh, with pneumonia may have normal procalcitonin levels if there is no secondary bacterial infection yet and only viral infection present, but um, in patients especially who requires intensive care unit treatment, uh, procalcitonin levels are high due to secondary bacterial infection. Um, uh, patient with COVID should be screened and isolated, of course, uh, and the point of first point of the contact with healthcare system. Uh, uh, testing of symptomatic pregnant women may need to be prioritized to enable access to specialized care. And there is no evidence right now that pregnant women have uh, increased risk of severe illness, but there is some report, uh, some uh, doctors reported that there's influence on the fetus uh, uh, by the COVID uh, disorder. Uh, collect, uh, patients should be collected black ulcers for bacteria and cause of pneumonia or sepsis before anti -micro, uh, by, uh, antimicrobial therapy. Sorry. Uh, and uh, if patient hospitalized is confirmed uh, COVID-19, it's usually PCR uh, confirmation, uh, so repeated urine and 
uh, blood samples should be collected to demonstrate viral clearance and frequency of specific specimen collection depend on the uh, local epidemic characteristic and the resource. So uh, for clinic hospital discharge in clinically recovered patient who have two negative tests at least 24 hours apart is recommended. Chest X-ray uh, usually uh, represented as uh, ground glass opacities. It's uh, interstitial pneumonia, so consolidation in case of bacterial secondary flora uh, will appear and crazy paving pattern. Uh, X-ray uh, imagining it's, uh, it can be, uh, well, of course, done, especially if patient has secondary viral pneumonia, if it's only interstitial pneumonia viral one. Uh, with, without bacterial components, sometimes X-ray, uh, by X-ray, it's hard to detect, but clinically, you can observe patients. So CT uh, is not recommended for patient with uh, uh, actually mild disorder, but if you suspect pneumonia, especially severe one, uh, your patient have high level of C-reactive protein, procalcitonin, uh, especially a high level of D-dimer is seen uh, or ferritin, uh, which is the uh, acute phase uh, reactant too. So this is chest CT can help you to make diagnosis of the pneumonia and assess the severity. Usually it's multiple lobes pneumonia, bilateral pneumonia, and this um, uh, areas of uh, affected lungs uh, situated peripherally comparing with the uh, bacterial pneumonias. Uh, also, it's uh, long-term pneumonia. As you remember, that pneumonia can last on, uh, changes can last on X-ray till uh, 12 weeks. So this is the case. So there is no need to repeat CT, especially an X-ray. If your patient show clinical signs of improvement, there is no deterioration of the state. You see that uh, blood uh, and clinical parameters are improving uh, and symptoms are disappearing. Here is uh, an example of possible CT findings from A, which is initial start of pneumonia with small offices and then deterioration of the patient's state. Uh, and poor uh, course of the disorder leads to appearance of the multiple uh, focuses of uh, uh, um, inflammation, even with uh, appearance of uh, um, pleurisy, of pleural effusion as a complication. Oh, sorry. CT should not be used to screen the patient or first line test uh, should be used sparingly in reserves for hospitalized symptomatic patient with specific clinical indication. Uh, facilities may consider deploying portable radiograph units in ambulatory care facilities for use uh, when medically necessary uh, and radiologists should familiarize themselves with its appearance of COVID in order to be able to identify findings consistent with the, the infection. Uh, so typically absent in the COVID is plural here, at least a big one, uh, which is usually a sign of congestive heart failure or bacterial pneumonia. There is no large lymph nodes uh, seen uh, in uh, other pneumonias in the diastem or helium or uh, for example, in lymphomas, and there is no lung cavities in, uh, if there is no secondary bacterial infection. When we talk about only isolated viral COVID-19 infection. So, as usual, thank you very, very much for your attention. If you will have any questions, please please use my email to contact me, and I will respond to your questions. Thank you very much again, and have a nice day. Bye bye.